Hello there. This is Christy Lewis from Dusty of Ski and Space, and today I... Hang on. There's somebody, like, outside looking in here? Hold on. I think she was letting her dog poop in my yard. Anyways, today I'm here to give you a few tips about how to read Dostoevsky because I realize there's a bit of a learning curve with my friend Fyodor. I've always connected with him very strongly. Um, every single book that I've read by him, I felt like it just blows my mind. It touches my heart, my spirit, my mind. It touches every part of me and I just love him. That does not make me an expert. However, despite the Dostoevsky in my name and the fact that I've read a few of his books, please do not take me as an expert. Um, I am just your average tuber giving some thoughts from my experience. So feel free to talk about everything that I'm talking about down below because it's definitely up for debate. These are things that I've just noticed as I read Dostoevsky. So let's jump into it. I'm actually 70% of the way through The Idiot right now for a read-along with the Codex Cantina and Leslie from the Nerdy Narrative and pay from attention. And so this is what gave me the idea for this video because Dostoevsky has been slandered. <laughs> I love you, Les. It has come to my attention that although Dostoevsky's characters are recognized as really amazing characters, that his characterization is very good, it can be hard to get to know his characters and that is because there's a few stages that you go through when you're reading a Dostoevsky novel. So let's talk about these stages. That's really what this video is about. So stage one usually of reading a Dostoevsky novel for me is excitement because he's really good at beginnings. He begins things off with these tantalizing details about people and the situations that they're in. Like, for example, with Crime and Punishment, you know that the guy that you're following, Raskolnikov, he's gonna go do something naughty like you can tell from the beginning and it helps that there's usually like an axe on the cover and it's called crime and punishment i think that the guy just knew how to have a good premise and the beginning of brothers karamazov you're getting to know this family that's basically a train wreck it's a russian drama and you're like i'm gonna be like privy to all this drama it sounds pretty juicy well the idiot is kind of similar this is an earlier novel of his so it's often been called you know not like his most skilled novel out of all his novels but let me tell you, I'm 70% through and I just hit one of the stages of Dostoevsky that makes him so worth reading for me. And that I will get to in a moment. So it starts off with the beginnings where you're usually tantalized. And then as you're observing these characters, you're like, they just, they don't really make sense, do they? Like confusion is stage number two because the characters are generally shown doing things um, wandering around, you don't usually get a glimpse into their head. You just see their behaviors and how they interact with people. And so you don't really understand what they're thinking, what anybody is thinking, other than through what they say. And that is because Dostoevsky shows. He does not tell. So when you're reading a Dostoevsky novel, it's very important to realize this. He shows. And later on, though, he tells. So if you're patient enough and you watch the doing, you'll get some clues later on and you'll have the other stage that I was just talking about, which is enlightenment. <laughs> so after you've watched these characters wandering around making usually very poor decisions, eventually it gets to a stage where Dostoevsky will give you, oftentimes in the form of a speech, what they are thinking, what philosophy is animating their thoughts. But enlightenment is not stage three. <laughs> it's stage four. The stage coming right before enlightenment is usually frustration and more confusion for a lot of readers. For some readers, that's not the case. I think that there's some super just really bright readers that do not struggle with this stage. However, uh, the thing is Dostoevsky oftentimes as he's starting to tell you what a character thinks will go into their philosophy of life. So there's a long speech and it can be bewildering and overwhelming when you reach one of these speeches <laughs> because the characters are spilling out their deepest, most innermost thoughts, but they do it like I'm doing right now, which is with lots of rambling and interruptions because human thought usually, unless it's been organized previously and it's like a speech that you've memorized, 
usually it's going to involve some ramblings and back and forths and, oh, that example didn't really work or make sense. And that's exactly what Dostoevsky's characters do. They're so psychologically accurate. Who was it that I was talking? It, it, um, I can't remember his name. I was just talking about somebody, Tristan from Tristan and the Classics, about this. And it was him saying this that kind of gave me that revelation that, yeah, his characters are all very psychologically accurate and he's going to show you their psychology. So this third stage of like extra confusion, I understand why some people stop there. And that's what's happening with the idiot is because we're getting these speeches of like the deepest, most innermost thoughts and driving motivations of several characters in part three of the idiot. And a lot of people are like, it's so slow. These characters are just representing philosophies. They don't make sense other than they have this philosophy. And I totally understand that reaction because that is a stage of reading Dostoevsky. But never fear, enlightenment is coming. So stage four, enlightenment. This is when Dostoevsky decides to get down and kind of repeat everything that's just been talked about. He'll often set up a conversation. There's a conversation like this in The Idiot where two characters sit down and suddenly everything is revealed of what they're thinking in like two lines. And you're like, oh, now all the previous behavior makes sense. It did not make sense until this conversation. So everything that you find out about the insides of characters, what they're thinking, what they're feeling, their relations between each other, um, it will come in a conversation. So it's, it's not being told by the writer just like telling you. It's always going to be in conversation. And there's going to be some confusion leading up to it, but I think it's because he likes to keep us in suspense. And I, for one, am a total fan of this style. I think it can be hard to be left in confusion, but if you have read Dostoevsky um, and you've developed trust with him, then you're going to appreciate those two lines that just reveal everything to you, and it's just going to be the best moment of the book for you. So I find that Dostoevsky is completely worth it for me for those those enlightenment moments. He makes you work hard sometimes with his books. A lot of times when I'm going through one of those stage three moments where I'm like frustrated, about ready to like give up for the day, sometimes it's better to set it aside for a day or two. Um, in fact, I, I've been reading The Idiot for like three months <laughs> and I'm supposed to finish it at the end of this month and you know, I, I hope that I do. In fact, today I had a really great run with him and I read like 10% of the book. <laughs> That's how reading a Dostoevsky is like. You will hit one of those really like slow spots. Not slow, but just difficult spots. For me, it's difficult. And I think for a lot of people, it's difficult when you hit those long speeches that are revealing somebody's innermost depths. But when you get to the point where Dostoevsky decides to make it very clear what he's saying and the rambling is over and the interruptions of themselves is over, uh, it, it is always worth it to me. Hey guys, Editor Christy here. I just wanted to say that a lot of times those really difficult sections are followed up by really dynamite sections that you just can fall into and you never want to stop reading it, which is what happened to me today, which is how I finished like 10% of it in a couple hours. I couldn't put it down. It was like so gripping after spending probably a couple weeks on a section of like a couple chapters where there's a lot of speech making where I just really struggled to get through there. And then suddenly it started making sense because I listened to it and then I went back and reread it and started taking notes. And then today I finished that section and I just couldn't put it down because the story like really picked up again and once you understand those characters the story just becomes so much richer so I wanted to add that. So I hope that this helps you. I hope that this makes sense. I do recommend if you're in one of those really difficult stages try it on audiobook or have your iPad read to you or whatever um, and just listen to it because a lot of times he'll start giving you the clues later on in the story and then if you go back and reread those sections 
it makes sense suddenly and i'm taking notes i'm all on my second or third time maybe fourth time rereading some of those speeches and i'm just writing in the margins like crazy it's exciting um i love this time in a dostoevsky novel when i feel like i've gotten a handle on things um but frequently there will be moments of understanding earlier in the novel as well to kind of keep you going um but yeah i think he's a fantastic storyteller i love the suspense he lets you know that there's good that that good things are coming. i just want to encourage you if you're struggling with dostoevsky i think that you will really enjoy it if you push through it and um i think it's worth it i think the ending to you will blow will, will blow your mind like his endings really are mind-blowing so hang in there enlightenment is coming <laughs> Okay, I hope this helped you guys and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.